Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Talks to Janesh. This is episode number 21 and in this video we're going to talk about how to find a research supervisor. Now you probably have a lot of questions. Uh, this video as well has been requested by so many people so it's finally out now. So watch this video till the end. Do you even need a research supervisor? And if you do, how do you actually find one? What should you do to increase the likelihood that a supervisor is going to respond to your request? All of these questions are going to be answered in today's video. My name is Janesh Modi and I make videos about life in Canada. I'm a third year computer science student here in Memorial University. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. You're watching Talks with Janesh. Let's get started. I'm Dr. Carissa Brown, and I'm the Graduate Officer and a Professor in the Department of Geography at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Paduska, and I'm the Head and a Professor in the Department of Physics and Physical Oceanography here at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Today we're going to talk to you about how to find a potential graduate supervisor. So first, before you figure out how to find one, you need to know what does a supervisor do? Well, unlike your undergraduate degree, for a grad degree you have a primary academic supervisor who may provide you pay, oversee your research, set the course requirements, mentor you in your research, and co-author your research publications. You can see that there's many reasons why you might need to list or identify a potential supervisor on your application. Part of this reason is to make sure that your application is going to be reviewed by professors in your field of interest and to see if they've got funding for you. It's also to encourage you to think about why you want to be in this program before you apply. Do you need a potential supervisor before you apply? Do you need to write that name on your application? Well, not always. It's best to check with the institution, the Graduate Studies Unit, as well as the department that you're interested in applying to. If you don't know what field or what kind of a supervisor you want, this is a really important thing to think about before you apply. You certainly don't need to have your future all planned, but you do need to be able to convince a potential supervisor that you're a good candidate. So begin by thinking about what skills and interests you have and what you'd like to learn in a degree program and why. So how do you actually find potential supervisors for a graduate degree? Well, a great place to start is to look at departmental websites and fields you're interested in. Also, check out departments that may be different than what you did your undergraduate degree in. To initiate contact with a potential supervisor, use email. This could lead to other contacts such as a phone call, a video call, or even an in-person meeting, but let the supervisor make those suggestions. What can you do to increase the likelihood that a supervisor will respond to that email request? Well, the best thing to do is to personalize that email. Don't use a form email and don't copy and paste the potential supervisor's webpage content. Use their appropriate titles of address and mention if you have any kind of connection to the supervisor or their research, the department or the institution. What I like to see when a student contacts me is that they've thought about why they want to do research with me and what that research might look like. So the first conversation you're going to have with a potential supervisor will be over email and it'll be a get to know you kind of exchange. Remember, you've looked at that supervisor's webpage so you know a bit about them, but they probably don't know much about you. So they'll ask you about your interests, your experience, and why you want to work with them, but feel free to ask them questions too. Find out what their lab or group life is like and how often you'll meet them. You can also about ask about financial issues such as what your pay might be and if you could be funded to go to conferences. A really key part to a successful graduate degree is to have a good fit with your supervisor. So how do you know if someone is going to be the right supervisor for you? Well, you should both talk to each other about your expectations. What do you each anticipate getting from your student-supervisor relationship? It's also really great to talk to current and former graduate students who have worked with that supervisor before and ask them what that person is like to work with. So if you find you're a perfect potential supervisor and they don't answer your email, don't take it personally. But at the same time, don't assume your email's gotten lost. Don't resend your message either. 
If a potential supervisor says that they can't supervise you, it can be pretty tough, but the really important thing to do is to believe them. There are a lot of reasons why someone might not be available to supervise. And the top two reasons there are finances and time. A supervisor wants you to succeed, and so if they don't have the research funding or the time available to help you, then they'll have to say no. So as you can see, communication is the most important part of a student-supervisor relationship, so start early. If you have further questions about finding a research supervisor or applying to graduate school at Memorial University, please check out our website and good luck. We look forward to hearing from you. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, then give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. In the next episode, we're going to talk about reference letters, how to get an effective reference letter for your admission in graduate school. Whom do you ask? What you should do? All of these questions are going to be addressed in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Presenting is going to be Dr. Farkerson, who is the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies. It's been fun. You're awesome. Talk to you later.